In this video, I'm going to show you how to work on the Zappable event calendar feature. So first of all, add the feature to your app. And once added, you can go in and edit it. Now I'd like to note that this is a beta version of the feature. So a few things such as editing the icon and app title and feature title. A few of these things are still to be implemented, but they will be whenever you're using this live. So first of all, we have the layout here. We have the events, custom styling, and advanced settings areas. You can see I've already added one event, which you can edit and delete. Let's add another event. We'll call this training event two. And then you add a date. You can select the year if you wish. And you select the bar and the minute. You can add tags here. And you can add a location which you can get directions to. This uses the Maps API. And you can add an image that will appear at the top of the event. And you can also upload an attachment, which will not be displayed, but can be downloaded by users checking the event in their app. And you can upload a PDF, a doc, JPEG, PNG, or GIF. Let's upload a banner image. And save the event. OK, let's update and preview. OK, in the styling area, you have, first of all, this checkbox, which I recommend checking. It means that you will use the colors selected down here instead of the overriding global colors, which you set in the styling area for the app here. Um, you can see that you have some themes to choose between. And changing the theme here will update all the colors automatically. So you have some preset colors to work from. I'm going to use this lovely fluorescent theme. OK, and then you can change colors here as you see fit. OK, and then hit Save to commit those changes. The layout of the app consists of, as you can see in the color selections here, the front page, which is this. The front page event list, which is this, and the event details, which you see when you click on one of the events here. And you can see the event has included the banner, the map, and some details and tags. We'll select the one that has tags. There you go. You can view the calendar in a few ways. You can view monthly, weekly, and daily. And that can be selected in the app as well. Edits you make here correspond to the changes here. Edits you make here correspond to the changes in the event details area here. The final area is the advanced settings area. Now in this area, you can upload a JSON file that corresponds to a to an API that you set up in a Google project and you can use that API to connect the feature to a Google calendar that may belong to your client or to yourself. So in order to do this you need one or two Google accounts. The first one has to be a developer account and you use that to set up a project to create a calendar API and the other account is a regular Google account with a calendar that is yours or say the cl your clients so that events can be shared between the feature and the calendar. You can import from the calendar to the feature and you can export from the feature to the calendar. Okay, so in order to do this, you need to log into your Google developer account and create a project or add a new project. You can also use a link that we'll include in the training, 
which takes you directly to the place to set up a calendar API project. You can add it to an existing project or create a project. Let's create a new project. As you can see, it's working here. This is your developer account and not the calendar account, although the two may be the same. The API is enabled now. To use the API, you need the right credentials. So we click that button and we're taken to the API manager screen. You can ignore this part. This helps you find out what credentials you need. If you don't know, I'm going to show you how to. You go to create credentials, OAuth client ID. To create this, you need to create a consent screen. I'll show you what this is later. This is what will be displayed whenever you connect the API to your calendar. The application type is other. This is the name you will see for the API within this project. Here's the client ID and secret key, which you don't need just now. Okay, so this is the name you see, training calendar API. And here's the OAuth screen consent screen if you need to edit it later. So what you need to do is click this download JSON button and save this. You can give this a name so it's easier for you to understand. And finally, you just need to check that this is enabled. This API is enabled because some APIs are enabled automatically and some aren't depending on how you complete this process, you may or may not need to check if it's enabled. So simply go to library, enable API, type in Google Calendar, click on Google Calendar API, and you'll see that there is a disable button here so that this API is enabled. If it says enable, then click on enable. Now we've downloaded the JSON file. We go back to advanced settings and Zappable, click on upload file. Find the JSON, upload it. Then we need to follow this link in our browser, which will take us to the consent screen for the calendar, where we will get an auth authentication code. Now here you want to select the account that you want the API to connect to. So you want to select the account that has the Google Calendar, not the account that you've created the API on. Of course, the two could be the same, depending on what exactly your app does. Here is the product name from the OAuth consent screen. The training video calendar, it's the API project, wants to manage your calendars. Allow to do this, allow. When you take this code, Copy it in here and submit. You've now connected, you've connected the API to the calendar that that account possesses. One final thing you need to do in order to have a calendar that is connected to this API is create a public calendar for that account. So go to Google Calendar for the account that you're going to use the calendar on And you'll notice that you have multiple calendars. Whenever you import or export from the feature, it will want to know which calendar you want to import and export from, and you'll be able to select one of these sub calendars from within the calendar. So if you haven't done so already, create a new calendar, 
give it an appropriate name. Make it public. It needs to be public for the API to interact with it. And create calendar. So if we go back to events and create a new event, and save events that I make here into Google Calendar, and then hit save. The event will now display here, but also in the calendar that you have exported it to. You can in fact add multiple calendars, which would be connecting to multiple Google accounts, so that you can import and export to multiple calendars. Once you've added calendars in the advanced settings, you can import events from those calendars by clicking on the import events button. You can also delete a calendar if you choose to do so. Let's import an event. Here you select the calendars. These are the calendars that show up here under my calendars. In this case, it's a client's account. Let's select the testing calendar and you can select a date range to import events from. So this has uses in in situations where you want to sync a calendar, a pre-existing calendar with the new feature. We'll take the last week. And we've now imported events to the feature. So play around with this feature, have fun with it. And let us know via the support ticket queue if you need support or if the feature doesn't work as intended for you.